Okay, so just doing a little recap of what we've done last week, and we spoke about the ism and the different types of isms, meaning the noun, and we said there are three types. One is uh, mustard, mushtaq, and jamid. Mustard being the root noun, and mushtaq being the derivative noun, and jamid meaning the primary noun. So now we are going to talk about fail and the explaining of the different types of fail. Although we won't go into it in detail, maybe in the next book we will start to delve into fail and the different types of fail and how it's formed, etc. So fail is a verb. Okay, that can be segregated or uh, divided into four four branches. So you have mazi. Mazi means past tense verb, meaning something that's done in the past. So it is a word which uh, uh, denotes a past tense, a denotes of a doing in past tense. So the definition of mazi is a word which denotes a doing in past tense. So for example, fa'ala. Fa'ala means he did. So doing something in past. Okay. Muzari. Muzari is present future tense verb. A verb which indicates of a doing which is currently being done or is going to be done in the future. So it is a word which denotes of a doing in the future or at present. That is the definition of Muzari. Okay, so if you want to write that down, the definitions, you can write down, although it's not written here, I can dictate it to you, so you can just write it down, jot it down, so that you know um, uh, the definition of it. So, for mazi, is a word which denotes of a doing in, uh, in, in the past tense. Muzari is a word which denotes of a doing in present or future tense. An amr means command, some, an order. And then you have nahi, prohibition. So, example of muzari is yaf'alu. He is doing or he will do. Okay? So, from that gives uh, the meaning of two tenses. So, there is no separate tense for for future or, or, or present individually, it can be used for both. So in whatever in whatever context it is used in, you will know that is he talking about something in the future or is he talking about something in the past, uh, sorry, something in the present. So that again, will uh, you will find out once you familiarize yourself with the, with the actual sentences and then looking at before and after it, uh, the meaning that the whole context you will then know if he talking about something which is done which is being done presently or something which is going to be done in the future so amr again means command something uh, 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 to to um, to order something so here an example is if'al do okay nahi means prohibition to to order not to do something la taf'al do not do. So, from if so, you know, we, we spoke about uh, mustard, that the the root noun, okay. Why it's called a root noun is because all these words actually are derived from that, from the mustard. So the mustard of fa'ala is al fi'lu, right? Al fi'lu. Now from there you derive the mazi. You derive mudari, you derive amr, you derive nahi. Okay, and it's quite easy. I mean, especially amr and nahi is something which people who are uh, accustomed, who are familiar with Urdu, they will know amr. Amr means order. Huh? Nahi. It means a prohibition. Not nahi is different. That means no. This is nah. This is, is nah, meaning don't do. Okay, so another example, Nasara, which means he did, sorry, he helped. Nasara means he helped. And if you was to make that into Muzari, 
you would then say yansuru which means he will help or he is helping and then if you want to make that into amr order you say unsur which means help and if you want to make that into prohibition you would say la tansur meaning do not help i give a third example daraba he hit yadribu he is hitting or he will hit idrib hit la tadrib do not hit so this is the, the four branches of fail which we will get accustomed to it as we go along maybe not in this book itself because this is the right elementary but once we go into the second book then the actual for whole um, the 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 the, the, uh, the whole um, should we say the whole um, drop down um, of all the words of each branch will be explained so if you can see the slight similarity is that for mudari they've put a ya at the at, at the beginning of it so this is how you make the mudari from there but i'll explain that uh, it may, uh, as it, when, when the time when the time comes so this is the four branches of fail so like ism has many branches so we spoke about ism has the two uh, two two sets of branches one is ismuzat and ismul ma'na the concrete ism yes the concrete noun and ismul ma'na is the the one that's uh, regarding the quality and then we had another um, of, of set of um, of uh, of, uh, of category of ism was the three which was masdar mushtaq and jamid masdar being the root noun mushtaq being the derivative noun and jamid meaning the primary noun and we gave examples of say for example examples of jamid being like zaid okay which means person name and it is it is not the the roots of any word nor is it derived from another word so that's why it's called a primary noun and then you've got mushtaq which is a word which is derived from a root noun so that's called mushtaq like for example uh, j um, uh, zahid means someone who's a very pious person someone who's uh, um, dissociated himself from from this materialistic world and then we had fahim which means a person who is very clever you know so this is words which have been derived from a root noun so zahid is uh, is derived from the word az zuhud az zuhud and then fahim is derived from the word al faham yes so this is a derivative noun and then we had the masdar which is the root noun from where all the words are derived so for example the root noun for fa'ala will be al-fi'lu and for for nasra will be an-nasru for darba will be ad-darbu which will which is the root noun from which all these words are derived from so the verbs are derived from that the the derivative nouns are derived from that all these source and etc so this is um, an, um the the different branches of fail now we're going to go to the third category of words so with the three categories one is ism fail third one is harf so let's go into harf now so al harfu again categorized into th into two one is amil the effective or governing particle okay and then you have غير عامل the non-effective or non-governing particle so al-harf means particle okay and we explain what particle what, what it means it means something a word which uh, to explain its meaning is in need of another word and does not carry any tense yes if you can remember that the definition of harf so the effective or governing particle means it has an effect on the word that comes after it what does that mean effective governing particle means a particle which has an effect on the word that comes after it so example here fi fi is a particle zaydun fil bayti now as you can see al bayt does anyone know what al bayt means 
Huh? House. Very good. So Albaidin's house. Now, normally all words come in the state of Rafa. Okay? Meaning in the state of Rafa. You know Rafa? Qasra Dhamma. Dhamma in the state of Dhamma. So Dhamma, another word for Dhamma is Rafa. Okay. So, but as you can see here, it's got a Qasra on it. Can you see it? So what changed it from Dhamma to Kasra? It was this fee here. Because this word, this particle fee had come, it had changed it from Dhamma to Kasra. So this is called effective or governing particle. It governed the word after it. It dictates what type of vowel it should have. Should it have a Dhamma on it? Or should it have a Kasra on it? Or should I have a dumb on it? Okay? So these this, this is one type of haruf. So this is called amil. Amil means something which has an effect, something which is is a doer. Yes. Can you please repeat that and get it? Which one? The Amil. Yeah. Okay. Haruf is segregated into two. There are two types of haruf. Okay? One is amil, which means the effective or governing particle. A particle which has an effect on the word that will come after it. Yes? Okay. So, in this example, as you can see, Zaydun fil Baiti, which means Zaid is in the house. Fi is the particle here. Fi is the particle. Now, all words in its normal state will be in the state of Dhamma. It will have dumb on it. So if fee wasn't there, this would have been al baytu. This would have been al baytu. So in normal state, if you leave it, if you pick up a word, how would you read it? Baytun. Okay? Hijrun. Gurfatun. Sa'atun. Kalansuwa. Kalansuwatun. Masjidun. That's how you read it. So so in a normal state, any word you pick up in the Arabic language, that's how you would read it. Okay? So there are certain things that would change that situ that Dhamma into either a Qasra or a Fatha. <coughs> in this case, the Dhamma has been changed into a Qasra. So we need to know when to put a Qasra or when to put a Dhamma or when to put a Fatha. So this is what... This lesson is teaching us that fi belongs to this category of harf, which are governing particle, which are effective, which make changes to the words that come after it. Now, different harf have different um, effects. This one, what it does is that the word after it makes it into a genitive case. It makes it into a kasra. What does it make into? A kasra. So, so this fee has made this baiti into kasra. Sorry. So Zaydun fil baiti. Zayd is in the house. That's what it means. But the the point of discussion is here is that the kasra is there because of fee. Right. So that's an example of of an effective. Arm. There's many more. There's many more. There's like wow, wow kasm. You know, we say, Wallahi, Wallahi. Have you heard it? I, I must, I'm sure you must have heard that. Yeah. Wallahi. You know? I swear by Allah. So, Wallahi. Why is it a Wallahu? Why is it a Wallaha? Why is it Wallahi? This wow is called Wow Qasmiya. It is, there are many different types of wows. Right? Many types of wows. This wow is called Wow Qasmiya. And what happens is that any word that comes after it, it makes it into Qasr. I'll give you another example. Wattini was Zaytun. Wattini. The Quran says, Wattini was Zaytun. Allah swears by teen. Anyone know what teen is? Fig. Yeah, Allah swears by fig. So Wattini. Wal Asri in al in. Wal Asri. Why is it no wal asra? Why is it no wal asru? 
So this is called Wal Qasmiyyah. So again, when you say Wallahi, there's a reason why you say Wallahi. You're not saying it because you're just saying it. You're saying it because this is called Wal Qasmiyyah and this makes the word after it into a Qasra. Puts a Qasra on it. Another example would be Wal Fajri Wa Layalin Ashr. Yes? So Wal Fajr. Normally we stop the Wal Fajr. But if you were to carry on, you say Wal Fajri. Wal Fajri. Allah swears by the, the dawn of, 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 of the tenth of the Hijjah. So again, so this, this type of particle is called the effect of governing particle. Then you have Ghayru Amil. The non-effective or non-governing particle, meaning that particle which has no effect on the word that's going to come after it. Example: These are some of the non-governing particle. Wow! So you got wow here again. So this shows that there are many types of wows. Many, many types of wow. So wow, we got one wow which is wow kasmiya, which will have an effect on the word that will come after it. Then you have wow artifa. Which means it is a, um, what do you call it, connecting words. And, you know you have and, then, in English word, you have connecting words, don't you? That's what my daughter told me, that you have the connecting words. She's learning connecting words in, in school. So, these are connecting words. So, wow, wow artifa is a connector. So, what's, what's happening here? Ja'a Zaydun wa Bakrun. Zaid and Bakr has come. What does that say? Zaid and Bakr has come. That's wow. So what what's happened to Bakr? Anything happened to Bakr? No. Bakrun it has that Dhamma, right? Has it changed? No. It's in its normal state, how it's supposed to be. So every word in its normal state should be in in the state of Dhamma. Okay? If it's if it's a common noun, if it's common Okay, then it will be in the state of Tanwin. If it's not common, it will be, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, if it's the non-common um, noun, then it will be state in a, in a Dhamma. If it's, in a, if it's a common, meaning it's not uh, individualized, it's not special, then it will have a, a, a Tanwin on it. Uh, not Tanwin, uh, Dhamma. So, otherwise there's different categories which I won't go into now. But uh, the, the point of discussion here is that the wow here is not having any effect on Bakr. Yes? So can we call wow both Amil and Gair Amil? Yes. Yes. Again, another one is Tallahi. Tallahi. Ta is also used for Qasm. Tallahi. La us'alunnaka. It's in the Quran. Allah la akidanna asnamakum Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam he says I swear by Allah la ati la akid la ati wallahi tallahi la akidanna asnamakum ba'da an tawallu mudbirin that I will come to your idols when you after you have left and he's gonna what's he gonna do to them he's gonna smash them so again that's that word is coming in the Quran so that ta is called ta qasmiya again the effect of that it will is that it will change the word that will come after it into a a a a kasra. Is there any question on this? Uh, is that a full sentence underneath the Arabic? Uh, 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 yes. Ja azaydun wa bakrun. Well, these are the examples of ghayr uh, amil. One is wow, one is fa, okay. one is thumma. Wow means and. Yeah. Fa also means and. Yeah. Thumma means also means and. Yeah, means but yeah. all three of them have a slight difference. Oh, right. Although in English, if you were to translate, it would mean and. But they all have a slight difference. Fa means something which has come immediately after. If I was to say Ja Azaydun. Fabakrun, that means immediately after Zaid Bakr came. Wow doesn't denote that. It doesn't say if he immediately came. He came afterwards, he could have come after five hours, could have come after ten hours. Or he could have come straight away. Summa means 
he came after a long time. So if I was to say, Ja'a Zaydun, Thumma Bakrun, that means Zayd came, and then Bakr came. So, although all three of them have and, this is what I'll tell you about how rich the Arabic language is, that although if you were to translate it, it would be and. But, those who understand the Arabic language, now because of knowing the Arabic language, and if you know all these in, in, uh, intrinsic meaning, then you will come to a, a right judgment. I'll give you an example. There's a hadith. Man sama Ramadana, thumma atba'ahu sittam min shawwal, kana qasiyam al This is a hadith that you've all heard in many times in Jummah. That whosoever fasts in the month of Ramadan and then follows it with a sixth fast in the month of Shawwal. Kana qasiyam al He's like a person who has fasted throughout the whole year. Yes, has, has, everyone, has everyone heard that? Yeah? You haven't heard that? Okay? So, so the, look at now, hear the words properly. Mansama Ramadan. Thumma. There. Thumma atba'ahu sittam min shawwal. So, the jurist. Okay? What they say. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used the word thumma. He did not use wow, nor did he use fa. So from that, the jurists have deduced that if a person wants to delay the sixth fast, not immediately after Eid, if they want to delay the fast, the sixth fast, and not keep it immediately after Eid, then they can do so. Why? It's because Prophet wasallam used Thumma, with Thumma denotes that it can be delayed. It didn't use far. If he said Man Sama Ramadana, eh? Fatbaahu sitta min Shawwal, then that would have meant that immediately after Shawwal you keep the six, and then you get the reward. If you don't, you won't get the reward. But just by so by understanding the words, have you got your hands up? Yeah. So and by understanding the little intricacies. The Jews have, didn't, have come with different injunctions. So this is why it's so important to understand the Arabic language. I just had an interest. You know what six uh, fasts keep? Do you have to keep them all together? Sorry? Do you have to keep them Again, Thumma is telling us you don't. You don't have, all right. This is why the, the, this is why the jurists have said that if somebody wants to break it up, yeah. somebody wants to delay the six fasts, as long as they keep it in the month of Shawwal, the, he, will, he or she will still get the reward because of the word. Yeah. So how do we identify when like, the wow is the anil or the ghaibar? Again, it all depends on, on, uh, on the context of using it. So once you, can, once you familiar yourself with these, you will then know straight away in what context is using it. Yeah? If you just take wow by itself, then you won't know. But if you look at what's before it and what's after it and, and what the sentence is, what the, what the topic's all about, you will know what's he talking about. Yeah? Yes? Is it just these three things which... Um, no, no, no. These are just examples. Just examples. Examples. There's many more. Okay. There's many more. Okay? Uh, yeah, yes? Does the Amil only have one example then? At the moment, we've only put one example. But there are more than... There are more. I'll give you another one. Okay? Um, shut up, what's the pen? No, Zaid is at home. Mm. Okay, if I was to write, I'm going to write it here, yeah? I'm going to use Zaid again. I ain't got space, so you just, you know I'm referring to Zaid, yeah? Zahaba Zaidun ila al-bayti. 
Zaid went home. Ila. Ila means to go to. Okay? Al Bayti again, as you can see, is in the state of Kasra. Right? So, what made it Kasra? Is again, this is Ila. And the sum of them, which gives it a Fatha. Yeah. So basically, the army will, it will be in the state of Dhamma will go into Kasra. So some of them will turn into Kasra, some of them will change into Fatha. Fatha. Yeah. Whereas uh, the, the other Peru army will always be into Dhamma. Yeah, it will not have no, no effect. Change, yeah. Effect. So basically, if, if whatever state is in, uh, for example, sometimes what will happen is that this will have a uh, Fatha on it. And this will have Fatah. But Fatah is not because of the wow, it was be, it's because of something happening before that. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody wants to write it down, write it down. Because I'm going to start explaining, then I'm going to rub everything down and we're going to do a little test. Okay, very simple test. But just to refresh and, and just to um, maybe try to keep you on your toes. Okay, this is a couple of, couple of, the, of the phrases that we will learn today. Min fadlik means please. You want to say please in Arabic? What do you say? Min fadlik. So you want to write that down, write down. I forgot to write please, but you can know. Min fadlik. What's that? How much? Become. Just about min fadlik. Oh, yeah. Become means how much. When about ask how much is something? Say become. Become harder. How much is this? Yeah? So let's start with this. Become how much? So this is our our our, our weekly fix. <laughs> how much? Min fadlik means please. Ain al makharaj. Where is the exit? Ain al madkhal. Where is the entrance? I'm sure you're writing it down. At the, week, we, at the end of week seven, you should have a good long list of phrases. Aina unwanuk. Where is your address? This means where is the no, min fadlik means please. I forgot to write please here. Min fadlik means please. So if you want to say something to you, Ishtab is shy, min fadlik. Please drink the tea. Yeah? Or you want to say please, min fadlik. So you're playing a fast one, so you don't need to write anything, yeah? This is uh, Modern technology is making us lazy. <laughs> but the benefit of writing is you get to learn how to write more Arabic. And that modern technology, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to do the, the, <laughs> the, the orthodox way. We have to come back to the reality. Yeah. So has everyone got that written down? And the other side. <laughs> So if you do write it down, the benefit is that you'll get to practice the Arabic. And the bottom one, what is your? Where is your address? Where is your address? Oh, Aina on Waluk. So Ain means where? Where. So you can see, Ain, Ain, I've used most of them. So you get used to where Ain. Ain al Madkhal. Where is the entrance? So if you go, I don't know if you've ever been to, um, who's been to Islam, uh, Islam Mosque? Who's been to um, Ridge Park Mosque? They read on the, it's an entrance, Madkhal. Makharaj. Yeah. On the, yeah. And the other side, has everyone written the. No? Okay. The good old internet, is it?
Are we ready? Uh, what does this mean? Zaid means Zaid went to ha- went home. Or went to the house, whatever you want to write. Where is your address? So in the previous lesson we learned about how to join letters, isn't it? Isn't it? So I'm just going to give you a quick letter segregated. So I just want you to join them up. Simple as that. Well, it's simple if you know it. <laughs> okay. Now you see it, now you don't. I'm going to do the words actually from the book. So if you've done the, done the work in the book, then I'm sure you'll be able to do this. Also with the sisters as well, if they can do it as well. And I'll just take uh, some samples from everybody just to... I won't ask you the meaning. I won't make it that hard. Okay? <laughs> I'll give you five, that's it. No, no, I'm not going to make it too difficult. Okay, it's very easy. I want you to. Re- As you can see, it's all written independently. Now I want you to join it up and write it as if it's a complete word. Join it up together. You should know how to write that together because we practice that. So have an attempt, inshallah. It'll jog your memory again. So if you can do that, if, um, if you don't have paper, Brother Zubel, Brother Zubel will give you paper. Um, if there's anybody who doesn't have paper, please put their hands up. Just, if anybody got, needs a paper, just give them. Has everyone got a paper? Also, maybe the sisters might need some paper as well. Um, so you, I'll give you the first one. Sabara. Okay, how would you write that together? So you write it together. Because obviously when you write together, it's not going to be in that form. Yeah. yeah, so you just need to write together. I'm not going to ask you the meaning. Although many of you will know what someone means in here. But <laughs> the rest, I won't make it too difficult. Although you, you should know it, because you've done it in the previous lessons. And please, uh, don't, don't look in the book. Otherwise, it's not point. <laughs> you're going to look in the book and do it. Have an attempt? Done. Oh, you've done, mashallah. 
Oh, I'll only if I had students like this all the time. That's a cough here. Sorry. <laughs> Not looking too good. Can you, can you, uh, lady, can they see the whole thing? Yeah. They can see it clearly, yeah? Well, two more minutes and then, inshallah, I'll just take a couple of... Are we all done? Yeah. Just, uh, still, mm. Are we all done now? Yeah? Yes. Inshallah, mashallah. Aki, if I can have, mashallah, your, your paper, please. And if I can have uh, yours, just pass it over. And if I can have the brother at the back. Yeah, mashallah, everyone done very well, better than me. So, well done, mashallah, very good. Uh, it does, okay, let's, let's check yours, uh, pass it back. If you can get one from the sister as well. Yeah, well, yeah, you can say you you you, you know do very well. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of easy, anyhow. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, very simple. Sabara. That's how you write it. Atasha, Atisha. Okay, Nakasa Rabata and Jalasa. So that's how you would write it. Mashallah, very good. Yes, yeah, so everyone's doing well. So the more we write, the more better we will become in writing it. So it's important that we try to um, do the homework that's been given and also, you know, um, just write whenever we can, really. Um, also, what. Ah, so that means you forgot. Yes, they are called the naughty letters. Can anybody tell me what are the naughty letters? Are? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, if you can just say, um. yep. Another one. Dal. Yep. Another one. Yep. Another one. Do you know the naughty letters? No. 
Yeah. Zal. Zal, yes. Wow. Huh? Wow, yes. Za. Za, yes. Did someone say raw? Someone said raw. So you got Alif, Dal, Zal, Ra, Za, and Wow. They are not letters. Meaning that letters will join with them, but they will not join with any letters after it. Okay? So that's why. If you see here, Ra would not join to the letter after it. But it does at Sabr. Hmm? At Sabr. Yes. Like Other letters will join to it, right. but they will not join. They will not, really. they will not join. So that's why they're called naughty. They don't want to, they don't want to cooperate. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They're very naughty. Okay. So if we go into mud... Page 44. As you all aware, the Fatha Qasr and Dhamma, they are the vowels in the Arabic language. But they are normally referred to as short vowels, meaning you don't stretch them. You read it very quick. So like these ones, you read it very quick. Jalasa, Rabata, Naqasa, Atusha. Sabara, very quick. You do not lengthen them at any point. Long vowels, again, it is the fatha the makasa, but you lengthen them. So th three letters of the Arabic alphabet are used are used to lengthen the sounds of the short vowels fatha, kasra, and dhamma. These letters are alif, ya, and waw. So if you want to lengthen the fatha, then normally you would write an alif after it. So the examples at the bottom, here. So if you go here, you will say ah, repeat, ah, ba, ba, ta, ta, ta sa, sa, ja, ja ha, 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 da, Za, ra, za, sa, sha, sa, ba, ta, va, a, ra, fa, ta, ka, la, ma, na. Yeah. yeah. The duration of lengthening is closing of one finger or opening. That's how long. You don't just ah uh, as if you're doing opera singing or something, you know? <laughs> just that long. One. So alif is used to lengthen the ah sound of fatha into an ah sound. Note the special shape of lam when it is joined to alif below. So at the beginning I gave you some sheets to show the different shapes of the letters. So it's just pointing out towards the lam that when you write it with alif, it will slightly change. So it will become like that. Okay? So these are the fathas when an alif uh, is after it, so you will lengthen it. Then you got the kasra. So this one is called alif, alif al mud because obviously the alif is there. This is called Ya Ul Mad. Again, it's because the Ya is there. And this Ya will come after a Kasra. So it gives, again, you lengthen it one, one Alif, opening of one finger or closing one finger. So E, e B, e, T, e, C, e, G, e, G, H, H, D, Z, Ri, Z, C, Sh, S, B, T, V, E, R, F, K, K, L, M, N, H, Y. 
So when you say we, make sure you don't sound like V. You know? We. we. Yeah. Some people, especially uh, people from, you know, those who are very accustomed to the Urdu language, they say vow. Vow. That's wrong. It's wow. We. Now, this is wow mud. Again, if you want to lengthen the Dhamma, you put a wow after it. So you say oo, bu, tu, su, ju, hu, hu, du, zu, ru, zu, su, shu, su, bu, tu, zu. Sure, your your when you pronounce it, it's, it's nice and clear. Not like o, or bo, or when you pronounce e, you say a, b. Okay, uh, that that is in order you call it majhul, meaning not pronouncing it fully. When you say ah, you just say o, something like that. Cause that's not how you pronounce Arabic language, although that's related to tajweed. But I thought I was mentioned here so that you also get the vibe and the feeling how it's being pronounced so these are the three muds these are called long muds and uh, you know you can call them fathatun tawila or qasratun tawila or adammatun tawila but um, the whole point of the exercise is that these will come in the arabic language and you should know how to pronounce them and how long it should be so are we clear with that yeah yeah Again, you got the practice with mud. If you look at the first one, kitabun. You don't say kitabun. Or you don't say kitabun. So it's kitabun. Kitabun. Yeah. Babun. Babun. Sa'atun. Sarirun. Sarirun. Feelun. Rishatun. Hutun. Dudatun. Bumatun. So you see how it's been pronounced. Like in Kitabun, it's, it's the Alif Madda. Okay? Then Babun again, Alif Madda. Sa'atun. So it's all about that. And then, inshallah, for lesson number five, we will be doing Sukun and Shadda, meaning Tashtid. Uh, so if you want to over that or have a quick look at browse it for get yourself ready for the next lesson then please feel free to do so so again now if I just tell you the meaning of these words kitab means book okay bab means door sa'atun means clock sarirun means bed it's all there filun means Elephant. Okay. Rishatun means feather. Hutun means whale. Dudatun means worm. And Bumatun means owl. Now, all these these words, what are they? Are they fair, ism, or harf? Ism. Right. Why is it ism? Noun. 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 Okay. Can, okay, let's make it more difficult. Is it Ismul Dhat or Ismul Ma'na? Ismul Dhat. Because it represents itself. It's not something which is, has to be attached to something. Okay. The other category. Is it Mustar, Mushtaq or Jamid? Kitabun. Master. It's master. Anybody else? <laughs> 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 
Looks like you're by yourself today. Kitab here, master for Kitaka is from Kataba. Okay? And Kataba means to write. And the, the master of that is Al Kitabatu. Al Kita? Al Kitabatu. Kitab here is Jamid. What is it? Jamid. Primary. Babun. Is it Jamid, Mustak, or Master? Jamid, yes. Sa'atun. Jamid, Mustak, or Master? Jamid. Jamid. Sarirun. Jamid. Jamid. Feelun. Jamid. All right, you got the gist of it. <laughs> okay, so there you are. Just a little bit of practice, knowing what in what category it will come into, inshallah. Is there any question now? Anything that you need to... Ask. Right. I summarize. Well, basically, how of particle is categorized. Or segregated into two into two branches. Yeah. So amil means uh, a governing particle, meaning a particle which will have an effect on the word that will come after it. Okay. That's what amil means. Again, amil means something, uh, a particle which will not have an effect on the word after it. So the, the governing particle there is fi, right? In that example, it was fi. Yes. Um, and uh, fi. So you can have wow, fi. Uh, you can have many. You can have ta, hasha, kalla. You know, there's lots. Uh, in, in due course, you will, you will uh, be given the long list. So and those, those words change the meaning of the, the word that follows after. It, it changes the haraka at the end, the fata kasadamma. Yeah, it will change whatever it needs to be changed into. But it's not always kasra, but it can be. But in this example, it changed into kasra. Is there anything else? Is same, Sorry again? So, so amil is the, the effective of the governing particle, and the zayru amil is a non effective. Yeah. Or non governing particle. Yes. What is your name, brother? Because I, 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 I want to give myself a question to. Rahil. Yeah. Rahil. If I can just quickly go over the name, I don't know. What's your name, brother? Akmal. Ah, Akmal. Akmal. Okay, I know him. <laughs> yeah. I know you. Uh, just, just say your names. Name. Name? Saeed. Hamza. Saeed. Hamza. Ahmed. Ahmed. Shamail. Shamail. Fahim. Fahim. Nabil. Nabil. Isa. Isa. Saifuddin. Saifuddin. Shahabuddin. Shahabuddin. Well, MashaAllah. Rahil. Rahil. Hashim. Hashim. No man. Oh man, mashallah. Yes, so Brother Rahil, you were saying? Um, you know the Amr, does the particle ever change into a Tanwin Kasra? Yes, it, will, it can from, 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 say for example, Dammatain, it will change into Kasratain. Yes. Uh, again, the, uh, we will learn in due course why Tanwin is applicable, when is Tanwin applicable, when Tanwin is not applicable, etc. Is there, any, is there any questions from the sisters? No, I asked. Yes. Mashallah, they're very advanced. And they, uh, they understand well. Alhamdulillah, very good. Yes, inshallah. Sorry, I'm, I'm rushing because I've got a meeting, a teaching meeting straight after this. And so I uh, want... Yeah, you can make a joke.